I want us to listen to some remarks made yesterday by Rigadi Gashagwa. The remarks are going to inform the basis of our analysis right now. Naibu Rais Rigadi Gashagwa ameendelea na matamshi yake kuhusu faida kwa waliounga mkono serikali ya Kenya Kwanza. Na Rigadi akisema serikali itawapa kipaumbele wale waliopiga kura Kenya Kwanza hasa katika nafasi za ajira na miradi ya maendeleo. Na Gashagwa alikuwa akizungumza katika kaunti ya Nandi ambapo aliandamana na afisa katika ofisi ya Rais Faruk Kibet na maafisa wengine serikalini kwa ibada kanisani na kisha kuchangisha pesa katika shule ya upili ya Kurgung. Rais ako pale. Niko hapo. Huyu Felix ako hapo. Rais mnamjua. Mimi mnanijua msibamo yangu. Ya kwamba watoto wakiwa wengi kuna wale kwanza ya kuangaliwa, si mnajua? Sasa huyu Felix ako pale ndio mwenye kuunganisha mawaya. Mambo yetu tumepanga. Mti mmeangaliwa vizuri sana kwa hii serikali. Wengine wakilalamika nyinyi mnyamase. Mm. Usionge mnyamaze. What you have is good. We are not saying you should not get more, but for now from where I sit, muko sawa. Head of public service. The big question is who is regarding a shagwa talking to? And what does those sentiments by regarding expose of William Ruto's rule? If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe in order not to miss our next video. Let's continue. Rigadi is talking to his fellow billionaires and millionaires in Kenya Kwanza government. He's not talking to Mamamboga or Boda Boda. And I'm saying that because if you look at the ordinary person in Rift Valley, Kenyans are suffering there. Not once, not twice, but on several occasions, we've been seeing the so-called hustlers complaining and cursing the day. They woke up very early in the morning to vote for Ruto. So as much as Rigadi is trying to bring that narrative that we have a shareholding government, he's clearly not talking on behalf of the common man. He's talking to his fellow billionaires who they received the freedom. And also from those sentiments by Rigadi Gashagwa, Rigadi is exposing that he's still a village politician who has not grown out of the mountain politics and the collegian politics. He's still stuck to that village mentality and that village politics. And this is why sometimes I do say in this forum that Kenyans should not be electing amateurs, people who have not yet matured enough to national leadership. It's clear Rigadi was not yet mature for that top position as a deputy president. He was serving his first term as a member of parliament, an MP. So his mentality is still a village mentality. Kenyans made a very big blunder by giving that kind of a person a top government position a deputy president. He was not ready, not matured for national leadership. And that's what is informing all these sentiments of a shareholding kind of a government. What does that also expose of Ruto's rule? The sentiments by Rigadi Shagwa, Ruto supports those sentiments. Even though sometimes he pretends to be reprimanding Rigadi, Ruto supports those sentiments, and that's why Rigadi still has that audacity to be repeating those sentiments. If Ruto was not for those sentiments, Rigadi could not be talking of a shareholding government. 
Ruto supports him. And that goes on to confirm that Kenya Kwanzaa is a very divisive government. They got power on the basis of division, pitting communities against communities. Wale wakurusha mawe, wale wakungwareli. Regard it as late as of now, he's still exposing that Kenya Kwanzaa is very divisive. So Ruto and Rigathi are not living up to the dictates of the office they hold. The presidency should be a symbol of national unity. Ruto, Rigathi and his team, they are coming out very clearly as symbols of divisions. And this is why I still maintain that if parliament was working as it should, then this is a government that ought to have been impeached long time ago. In fact, their continued stay in office, they're just sowing seeds of discord among Kenyans. And Kenyans should reject this politics of hate and divisions being propagated by Kenya Kwanzaa government. It's my honest opinion that Ruto and his team these are individuals not worth holding public offices. In the one year and about six months they have been in power, they have proved clearly, beyond any reasonable doubt, that they are just ethnic chauvinists. Regardless, is also telling some people, as others are complaining, they should not be complaining, I'm taking that to mean regard is just telling those areas that supported them that they should suffer in silence. They should not be complaining. And that also just exposes how some of these politicians are assuming Kenyans are fools. Regarding just a few days ago, about two days, the controller of budget revealed that in last year, the control of budget revealed that last year, Rigadi's office spent about 10 million Kenya shillings on office curtains alone. Curtains alone, Rigadi's office spent 10 million. As he spends that huge chunk of money, Kenyans are going hungry as a result of the high cost of living. So you are seeing leaders who are taking Kenyans to fools and they are exploiting that ignorance among some section of the population to enrich themselves, hmm, to live large at the expense of the ordinary Mwananchi. Kenyans should wake up to reject this. And I'm happy that yesterday in Kiambu, as Kimani Chomo was there trying to campaign trying to <laughs> propagate the Kenya Kwanza lies, he was heckled. Kiambu residents told him no. For those who are not seeing that clip, have a look at this clip as we conclude. <laughs> President William Ruto. Yeah, I don't know.
That's how Kenyans should be treating some of these leaders. These leaders are assuming Kenyans are fools. So Kenyans should tell them that they are the ones who have employed them. They should not know any peace. Kenyans should make life very difficult for them. Let's meet in our next analysis. For those who are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe in order not to miss our next video. Let's meet in the next video.